Hey everybody, welcome back to The Glam Room. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. I hope and pray that you will subscribe to me because I'm amazing and you know, you might like my, you might like my content. We're going to be continuing with the eyeshadow portion of our Back to Basics series. Today is all about color. We're going to be learning how to choose colors so that all your eyeshadow looks are harmonious. We are going to be talking about transition colors, outside colors, inside colors, lid colors, color theory, how to pick colors. So if this is something that you are interested in, and I think you are because you made it this far, stay tuned. I think that we should talk about in how to choose colors is color theory. The color theory is very complicated and it's probably not complicated for people who have studied this in school but it's complicated for me and I'm going to try to explain it to you as easy as I can so that you can understand why this is important in picking colors. The color theory can be found anywhere. It's in like advertising, it's in interior decor, it's in like styling, it's in makeup, it's the same principles anywhere. You just have to pick colors that are harmonious together and in order to do that we need to have a little background. If you know this already, I apologize. I do not think that you are an idiot. I am just explaining for those of us who don't know. Back when I was starting out I didn't know so I'm just explaining for explaining so that people can understand. If you do know, don't you don't gotta listen to this part. I mean I want you to listen to this part but you don't have to. The color wheel was invented by somebody a long time ago. I have no idea who it was and we, we probably don't even have to get into that. But it was invented. And it is something that people of all like design aspects use to help them pick things that look good together. I'm gonna put some pictures on the bottom of the screen to help you guys out, okay? All right, the color wheel shows us what colors match. You don't have to have these if you're trying to do makeup. I just had it because I felt like it would be a good tool to have while I'm explaining this to you so that I don't get confused and so that you guys don't get confused. If you have one, great, follow along. If not, the first thing that you gotta know about the color wheel is that there are three primary colors. I think we learned this in kindergarten, but it's okay. Red, yellow, blue. Primary colors can't be mixed, can't be made. They're just there. They're like alpha and omega. They're just, they'll always be there. They've always been there. Then we have secondary colors that's made from mixing two primary colors together. Violet, orange, and green. Then we have tertiary colors which are made from mixing a primary with a secondary. So you have red plus violet equals red violet. How this translates to picking colors from eyeshadow palettes or from single shades that you guys have. If you have a color on a color wheel, the color that is going to most complement it is directly across the color wheel. So if you have a yellow shade, then the color that is most going to complement it is going to be purple because that is directly across the color wheel from it. If you have a red shade, the color that's going to most complement it is green because that is directly across from it in the color wheel. And when they say complement, they're just going to pop better. I'm putting up my Black Panther look because that is where I used a red shadow and a green shadow together and they pop. They complemented each other well. There are other harmonious color schemes on the color wheel. The first one we're going to talk about is analogous. Analogous harmony means that there are two or more neighboring colors in the color chart. So if you look at the picture that I'm about to put on the bottom of the screen, a red, yellow, and orange eyeshadow look will look great together because they are next to each other on the color wheel. My analogous look, you see that I have a blue, purple, and like a fuchsia dark reddish eyeshadow look. Blue, blue violet, violet, and red violet. These are all next to each other on the color wheel. And as you can see, we have the blue and the blue violet on the outside corners of my eyes, the light blue on the lid, and then the red violet um, as my transition stick. The next one we're going to talk about is monochromatic. Now monochromatic just means that we are using one color and using different shades of that color. I'm putting a, another picture of something I did. In this picture you see I have different shades of brown as my eyeshadow look. So we have the darker brown on the outside, we have like a medium red brown as my transition and a light brown as my lid color. Lastly, we have split complementary. And split complementary, this is hard, so let me find some notes, because I took some notes. Split complementary shades is when you use any color on the color wheel and then the shades that are directly outside of their complementary color. So I'm going to show you that because that says, that says a lot, right? So here we have, hold on, hold on. 
we have orange, right? And directly across from orange is blue. So instead of using blue, we would use blue violet and blue green. Ooh, sorry, and blue green. So basically it's it's like a peace sign. It's like a peace sign. Think about that. It's like a peace sign. So in my split complementary photo, we have yellow, pink, and green, right? So if you look at the color wheel, um, and it's not going to be exactly the same all the time because you, you, you can use shades of the color as well and they will still look really good together and look harmonious. We have red violet, right? Then we have yellow and green. That's a split complementary look. You don't have to remember all of this in order to have good eyeshadows. This is just a basis that you can use. I don't want you guys to go out and buy a, a, a color wheel and be like, oh, what can I use? No. It's just the basis. Even more important than all of that is how you blend them together. And I promise you, like that is the most important part, is blending. I have a theory that you can pick any color, and as long as you blend them well, it will look nice together. But we'll test that some other time. We're not gonna test that today. So now that we learn about color schemes, let's pick some colors. I'm going to open up the Modern Renaissance. We used this in last week's video. And let's have a look. We have all of these colors that are all harmonious already. Usually, nowadays, people do not buy single shadows, they buy eyeshadow palettes. In a good eyeshadow palette, all of the colors are harmonious already. So no matter what you pick, you'll be um, getting a really nice, cohesive eye look. Where most people have issues is what shade or what tone of the color should they pick. And for that, I say always make sure you have a light, a medium, and a dark. Three. That's all you need is three and um, it doesn't have to be, it could be like with this palette, it could be anything. So your light could be Primavera like we did last week. Your medium could be Realgar and your dark could be Cypress Umber. That's one look right there. Um, your light could be Bon Fresco. Uh, your medium could be Burnt Orange and then your dark could be Venetian Red. Anastasia usually does a good job of making cohesive palettes. So the palette that I'm going to be using today for the demo, the Juvia's Place Deuce palette. I don't know if it's Deuce or Deuce. The fancy in me wants to say Deuce. I got this on Friday in the mail. It is now Sunday. I have not, I opened it to swatch it but I have not put it on my eyes. So let's open it up and see what it's looking like. This is pretty harmonious. You can find all of those color schemes that we talked about before. You can find that in here. If you use these four colors, you'll get a monochromatic look. Even though this looks white, it has a pink and gold shift to it. So you'll have your light colors, your medium color, and your dark color. Um, and then we can use these three colors. You'll have a light color, a medium color, and a dark color. And these are across from each other in the color wheel. This would be your green and this would be your red. And even if you don't want to look at it like that as like green and red, you can look on the color wheel and you have red, violet, and yellow, green are right across from each other. So let's play in it and see what we come up with today. So right now we're going to be adding on to the skills that we learned last week with the blending. We're going to be mixing colors with it. I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. We're just gonna wing it, okay? Let's pray it comes out good. My eyes are prime. I'm not setting them with any powder because I don't know how these colors are gonna show up. So just to, just so that we can get all of the, you know, we wanna get all of the pigments, I'm going to just not set. We're going to start off with cream and I'm going to use that as my first transition shade. This is very, Ooh, I'm scared this is light. I'm just using this to dust the color um, right above my where I'm going to put my transition shade. Now I am going to get the crepes. I'm going to put that right below where I just put the first transition color. I am moving on to my crease color. My crease color is going to be custard, which is this one, this bright pink right here. I'm going to put that directly into my crease with my MAC 217. And if you think about it, this is following exactly what I told you guys last time. You start from the lightest and go in until you get to your lid. And also, I forgot to say, if you mix mattes and shimmers, it tends to look nice. It gives your eyeshadow more dimension. You can do looks with all matte shades, and I typically, I really like all matte shades, but usually I put a, a little bit of shimmer and shine somewhere. It's usually on my inner corner or in my um, brow bone, just to give it a little bit more oomph. Like I said before, do not put a shimmer in your crease. 
Don't put the sugar on your face. That's it. This brown is called chocolate. And um, we're going to use that as our dark shade. Now for our lid color, I think I'm going to use puffs. I ended up changing my lid color from puffs, which was this pink one down here, to tart, which brings me to another point that I forgot to mention to you guys before. Um, usually when you're doing eyeshadow looks, we need to stick to either cool or warm. Actually, there's always exceptions to every rule. I really like putting a warm transition color with cool shades down. I don't really like cool transition color because I feel like it washes me out. But I will do a warm transition color with a cool outer shade, a cool lid shade. Cool colors are blues, greens, and violets. And warm colors are reds, yellows, and oranges. Now, you can have a warm shade of something and a cool shade of something. I'm going to show you that right now. Now, even though these two colors, like this one looks white, it's actually pink, and this one looks pink. But they are two different shades, and I'm going to show you that. So right now, on one finger, I'm going to swatch tart, and on the other finger, I'm going to swatch puffs, and we're going to look at it right now. So here we go. This is tart. And this is puffs now as you can see this one has a little bit more life to it I don't I don't maybe not life this one this one is warmer it has more of a yellowy undertone it has gold flecks in it whereas this one down here is silver even though the pink in this one is deeper when it shifts you see silver and when this one shifts you see like a pinkish gold so that is also important when you are picking shades make sure you put warm shades next to warm shades and cool shades next to cool shades because then they just look a little bit better now we're going to continue on and finish up the look so that I can get off your computer screen or TV screen hey Sheena Sheena watches me on the TV I feel like a superstar I'm going to finish up the bottom of this look and to do that, I'm going to put the brown at the bottom and then blend it out with the matte pinks. I'm not going to use the shimmery one because we don't need that type of, type of problems in our lives. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. And in order to wrap up everything that we have learned today, I'm going to go back over it in regards to what I did on my eyeballs right here. The first thing that we have to remember is to follow the color wheel. We're going to pick color schemes that are harmonious. So we can have complementary shades across, we can have analogous shades next to, we can have monochromatic, which is different shades of one color, and we can have split complementary, which is a color and the shades that are directly next to its complementary color. Today I did a monochromatic look. I did shades of pink. The second thing that we have to remember with eyeshadow is the intensity. You need to remember to have a light, a medium, and a dark. I used two colors to get the light, which is on my lid. We used puffs and tart mixed together. The medium, we use three colors. We use cream, custard, and crepes to get the medium that's up here. And for the dark, we use that chocolate down here. Now, I know that chocolate it isn't pink, so it's not altogether monochromatic, but I felt like this look needed something to ground it. And browns, blacks, they're neutrals, so they kind of don't count when you're doing um, like monochromatic looks and you put them in there. And I felt that brown would be better than black in this look because I didn't want it to look too nighttime. It doesn't matter how many shades it takes to make up your light, medium, and dark. As long as you have a light, medium, and dark, your eyeshadow will have dimension. Remember to mix mattes and shimmers. If you use all shimmers, you will look like a disco ball. You will look like you came out of the 80s. That is not cute anymore. Don't use all shimmers. You can use all mattes, but make sure that you have a pop of something somewhere. Like if you have a glossy lipstick or if you have like really popping highlight, then that's good too. Or you can put some in your inner corner and on your brow bone. I didn't do any of that today because I forgot. If you guys have any more questions about eyeshadow, be sure to ask me below. You can also ask me on Twitter and Instagram. I do not have a Snapchat anymore because they decided that they wanted to poke fun of a domestic violence situation featuring Rihanna and Chris Brown and I just, I didn't appreciate that. So I deleted it. I will no longer be uploading any content to Snapchat. That is my little two cents. I'm gonna step off my soapbox now. But you can find me at Glamazon1026 on Instagram and Twitter. Ask me questions there. I will also, 
will be taking suggestions if you guys need more information about eyeshadow if there's still something that you don't understand put it down below and I will make sure that I make a video about it I don't know when I'm gonna make that video but I'm gonna make a video about it because I really really want to help you guys and um, you know if that's what you're here for if you're here to learn I'm here to teach thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe and um, I will see you guys next time